Friends, this is a cataract with pseudo exfoliation. We can see white flaky material at the pupillary margin and on the lens capsule. Pupil was small initially, but with uh, frequent in drops with tropicamide plus phenylephrine, the pupil has dilated to about 5.5 or 6 millimeter. It should be adequate for surgery. Uh, I have made the incisions, main incision and on paracentesis incision. And now I am staining the anti capsule underneath an air bubble. I want to stain the anti capsule because if fissurient occurs, I want to see the anterior capsular rim. A stained anterior capsular rim will help in sulcus fixation of eye I have injected adrenaline also in this case. And now I am washing off the dye. Now viscoelastic substance, ASPMC is being injected at this time to fill up the anterior chamber. Now I want to do capsular axis. This is the side port on the left side of the main incision. Now I take a 26 gauge band cystitum and incise the anterior capsular rim and raise a capsular tag like this. Here it is. This is a nice capsular tag, easy to hold with the iterator forceps. Now I take this iterator forceps, go anticlockwise. And I take the pseudo exfoliation material. I do the axis in such a way that most of the pseudo exfoliation material comes out. Sometimes this material can get deposited on the trabecular meshwork, and 50% cases of uh, this pseudo exfoliation usually have glaucoma open angle glaucoma. This is hydrodissection. I am extremely careful during hydrodissection. I am injecting a little bit of fluid, not a lot of fluid at a time. I am gently depressing the nucleus. I am doing some more hydrodissection here on the other side, depressing the nucleus again. Now I am trying to rotate the nucleus. Here it is. Rotating it gently and now I am happy that the nucleus is rotating because the people is small and if it doesn't rotate I don't know how to manage it. Now in this case I am going to do direct chop like this and here it is. The people has become quite small now but st still it is manageable quite adequate about 5 millimeter pupillary size at this time. I have been able to chop the nucleus into two halves. I am using 450 millimeter of mercury vacuum and 45 is the flow rate. FECO power used in this case is 65 percent. This is Oatly Catrix 3 FECO machine. The nucleus is not very hard. It is grade 3 plus and it's a brittle nucleus getting chopped easily. No leathery fibers. That's it. I'm extremely cautious because in these cases the uh, Joni will may be weak and I must not I must not impose undue stress on the Joni This is the last part of the nucleus. coming out very easily. This is a minimally edited video and you are going to see most of the surgery, almost 90% of the surgeries.
that's it nucleus and epinucleus has been managed and now I'm going to inject a little bit of SVMC here it is now this is a Simco cannula using Simco cannula to remove the uh, cortical lens matter from 6 o'clock say from 2 o'clock to 9 o'clock this portion can be easily removed by the Simco cannula when the pupil is small I am more comfortable with this very simple instrument I'm taking care not to touch the iris now I'm going to to the side put on the right side of the main incision and removing this uh, cortical matter that's it now the left side port is very small so I'm going through the by manual and removing the lens matter that was at around 10 o'clock little bit of polishing of the posterior capsule is done now in this case I have selected a hydrophobic acrylic intraocular lens and I'm going to use this plastic substance to implant this lens here is the intraocular lens the leading haptic goes into the capsular bag and the trailing haptic is guided into the capsular bag by the chopper now I take a Sinsky hook and with the help of the chopper and the Sinsky hook I dial the lens and place the haptics at 2 o'clock, 9 o'clock meridian. Now I am going to remove the viscoelastic substance thoroughly. This is the first step removing the visco with a direct Simco cannula. Now I'm going to use uh, the irrigating probe or bimanual IA irrigating the antechamber. Now I'm going behind the eye well, irrigating the capsular bag. At this time, irrigation also causes some polishing of the posterior capsule. Now I'm going to use both irrigation and aspiration together. Removal of viscoelastic substance is very essential to prevent post of rise of intraocular pressure. This is use of both irrigation and aspiration. Now the side ports are hydrated and these side ports are made watertight wounds and a final wash is given. The antechamber is formed with viscoelastic with BSS. Here it is. I form the antechamber with BSS like this. Check the integrity of all the wounds and conclude the case. Thank you very much.